Do you find yourself supporting an environment that is made up of Cisco switches today and you're wondering about that MAC address table that is key to the functionality of that switch? Well, in this episode of What the Pros Know, we're going to take a look at the MAC address table in detail. So I was about to jump on to the actual physical routers and switches that we make available here at IT Pro TV for our students for hands-on lab work. That's right, real equipment. And then I realized, you know, instead of taking a reservation slot of that equipment, uh, let me just fire up Packet Tracer. Packet Tracer, as we can see, is a wonderful tool that we're going to be able to utilize in order to simulate these Cisco devices. So it's just such a nice thing to be able to go ahead and see your routers and switches and PCs and bring them into this environment and then work with them inside of Packet Tracer. Packet Tracer is interesting too, by the way, because it used to be exclusively for the Cisco Networking Academy students, but now, sure enough, Cisco makes it freely available to anyone that would like to download it. So I certainly encourage you to do so. Now, here in this topology that I've built, you see that we have three PCs, and they are PC0, PC1, and PC2. Notice they are connected to this 2960 switch. Now, the first thing that we would want to do in an environment like this is let's make sure that these devices can communicate with each other. So I'm going to go to the command prompt of one of our devices here, and I am going to issue a ping. So I happen to know that PC0 is at 192.168.1.10. So I'm going to ping that PC0, and the ping is from PC1. And we can see that all five of those ping packets succeeded. And I lied, all four of those ping packets succeeded. Not one was lost. Everything worked great there. So if those systems are communicating so efficiently like that through this switch, I believe if we go to that switch, we'll see that the switch is doing its job. It is transparently unknown to the PCs, unknown to the any of the network devices. It is transparently learning the source MAC addresses of those devices so that it can intelligently forward traffic to those devices. So if I do a show MAC hyphen address table on this switch, look at that we can see the results of this switch doing its job. It is learning dynamically the MAC addresses of those devices that are connected. And notice that it learned through Fast Ethernet 0 slash 1 the MAC address of PC0 and Fast Ethernet 0 slash 2, the MAC address of PC1. So notice because PC2 was left out of the communications there, it did not show up in the MAC address table. So when it's not communicating, the MAC address value will age out of the MAC address table, and that information will have to be relearned. Let's test this. So I'm going to go to this system and I will go ahead and ping 192.168.1.10. So now we're pinging from PC2 up to PC0. And so now, based on what we've said, if we go to the MAC address table and we look at it with our show MAC address table command, and this worked out beautifully, there's our old running of that command, and here's the new running of that command, we can see, sure enough, there is an additional MAC address there in the entry, and it is the MAC address of the PC2 device, which is located there on the fast ethernet 0 slash 3 port. So we can see this switch is doing a great job of learning those MAC addresses transparently, those source MAC addresses, so that it can do its work. 
Now you might notice that there is this zero slash four interface. Hmm, and we're learning a MAC address from that. What could that be? We only have three PCs. Well, if you look at our total topology here, I built it kind of realistically. This is a layer two switch, switch one, and it is making a trunk connection up to a multi-layer switch called distribution one. And sure enough, that multi-layer switch has a MAC address. And sure enough, switch one has learned that MAC address. In fact, we're going to see that in there all the time because these two devices are constantly, they're consistently communicating with each other over that trunk link. So that is a dynamic entry. We're going to see not time out and be in there all the time. Now, something else that I wanted to impress upon you, a couple things actually, about this show MAC address table command that is going to be your just critical command when working with these switches and troubleshooting is often where we get into the show MAC address command. The first thing I wanted to point out to you is unfortunately, Cisco was not all that consistent with the command syntax across their different switch models. And let me prove that to you. So notice here on the 2960, I did show Mac hyphen address hyphen table. And that is our show Mac address table command. But if we go over to this distribution layer switch, I believe it's a 3960, it's show Mac address hyphen table. So notice there is slight variance there in the command. The great news is if you use the tab autocomplete like I love to do, then if you do show space Mac, then hit your tab, you will autocomplete uh, really either variation of that command. So that should work beautifully for you. Now, the other thing that I wanted to talk to you about is, oh, one of the rare things you can do. Let's see if this device allows it. Yes, it does. Look at that. So when doing real advanced troubleshooting, we do have the clear Mac hyphen address table command, and that will do just what you think it will do. It will automatically, look at that, flush all of the entries from the MAC address table, and they will repopulate, of course, and they'll repopulate as those different devices get connected and start communicating. For example, one of the addresses, look at that, that we would expect to automatically be populated back in there based on what we've said is the MAC address of the switch that we are trunking with. So that is working just as we thought it would might. Just as we thought it would might. That's a strange way to talk, isn't it? So let's go ahead and do one last thing. I couldn't wait to show you this, really. And this is answering the question that you'll often get from students about this, and that is, how many MAC addresses could this device actually learn? And the answer is a little tricky. So what Cisco has done now is they've given us switch administrative templates. And this allows you to take a switch and basically tell the switch what role it's going to play in the network. And then based on what you tell it its role is, the switch will modify the sizes of all of these internal components so that it is fine-tuned for exactly what you want to be doing. So, for example, if I do on this switch right here, I do a show SDM prefer. I know the command is a little strange, SDM but that's the syntax they went with. If I do a show SDM prefer, it says, okay, Anthony, well, the current template in use is the default template. And with the default template, we have tuned this device to support 8,000 MAC addresses. 
and uh, 256 IGMP groups for IPv4, and then for QoS access control entries, we can have 128. For Mac security access control entries, we can have 384. So isn't this interesting where you can modify the behavior of these important internal components with these administrative templates? And how you would do that is you would go into global configuration mode and you would say SDM prefer and then you would give the name of the template that you want to apply. So I just went in and did the QoS bias type template and it says, okay, changes to the running SDM preferences have been stored, but they're not gonna take effect until the next reload. So if I do a show SDM prefer right now, I will see that, yeah, we're still at the default template, but on the next reload, the template will be the QoS template. Now it's interesting that this little simulated switch, and by the way, thank you, Switch One, you've done a great job for us. Didn't mean to belittle that device, calling it a simulated switch, but this little simulated switch here is only showing us two options there, right? The default and the QoS bias. As you might guess, in a production environment with your actual Cisco switch, you're probably going to see many more possibilities when it comes to the template, especially on a multi-layer switch, because the multi-layer switch will have templates that will indicate more of a routing bias to a switching bias, more of a multicast bias to a unicast bias, more of an IPv6 bias to an IPv4 bias. So lots more of those templates in that environment. Well, the last thing that I wanted to point out for you about that wonderful MAC address table that we now know and love on our Cisco switches is just to point out to you that remember, everyone likes to represent the MAC address in a slightly different way. Don't let that throw you. So the MAC address here we can see is four characters dot four characters dot four characters. What is it on a PC? Well, there tends to be a tremendous variation there. Let's go to this PC right here and go to the command prompt and let me run a, how about show, uh, not show, that's not gonna work on a PC, IP config forward slash all. And when I do that, hey, look at that, it does the 4.4.4 characters and that's because it is a Cisco bias. So let me do this. Let me go down to my terminal. You ready for this? And now I'm on my terminal in the Mac and let me just bring up a window that you can actually see. Not that one. How about a window named demo where the font is large enough for us to actually see, perfect. And I'm gonna do an IF config here on this Mac system that I'm running and does that show us the, the burned in Mac address on the interface? It, uh, let's see, there it is. There's the Mac address on my interface and boy, doesn't that prove the point to me, uh, for us. It shows two characters, colon, two characters, colon, two characters. So don't be thrown by those different presentations of the MAC address that you were going to see. Cisco is going to adopt a presentation style in your MAC address table. And just understand that that might not match the presentation you see elsewhere. Well, I want to thank you on behalf of everyone here at IT Pro TV for joining me in this YouTube look at the MAC address table on these Cisco switches. It is clearly a very important component for us to be familiar with, and we may be working with it quite a bit in advanced troubleshooting scenarios. My name is Anthony Sequera. Again, so glad that you joined us, and now you know what the pros know.